Today we are going to talk about the one simple thing that can almost single-handedly redeem a song and make people like it who otherwise would not, and that is the hook. So specifically we're going to be talking about the four do's and don'ts of hook writing because writing a hook can be such an important, if very simple, element of writing a song, so let's talk about it. Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of the Songwriter Theory Podcast. As always, I am your host, Joseph Vidala. Today, we're talking about the four do's and don'ts of writing hooks, because writing hooks are very important. Before we dive in, though, hook writing is one of the 10 different things that I talk about in my free guide on 10 different ways to start writing a song, starting your song by writing a hook is one of the 10 ways that I talk about in that guide. So if you're interested in learning the other nine ways I talk about for starting a song from scratch, different places, song seeds, if you will, to start with, be sure to check that out. It is free at songwritertheory.com slash free guide. Link in the description if you're on YouTube. So be sure to check that out. There is a section on hooks, which is what we are talking about today. So first, what is a hook? What is a hook? So a hook is somewhat of a vague term, but generally speaking, found a definition that I think is a pretty good one. I think it was from Wikipedia, but, and it's that a hook is a musical idea, often a short riff, passage, or phrase that is used in popular music to make a song appealing and to, quote, catch the ear of the listener. So hooks can be vague, right? Sometimes hooks are actually vocal hooks. Sometimes even certain choruses can be referred to as a hook, especially choruses that are specifically repetitive and kind of low on lyrics, but have sort of one catchy vocal hook that happens over and over and over again. Sometimes that is referred to as the hook. Songs can have multiple hooks because really what a hook is, is it's a little bit of ear candy for the listener that tends to be repetitive and repeated a lot that just makes the listener tune in, makes the listener listen and pay attention, right? Gets their attention. At the end of the day, that's really all it is. It's it's a part of the song to catch the, the listener's attention. And it usually is something also that's repeated and is recognizable. And we're going to talk about some of the do's or don'ts of them here. But before we do that, Let's just run through some examples of hooks in case you don't have some clarity on what a hook is. Maybe you've never even heard the term hook before. Um, So something like Under Pressure by Queen or, uh, you know, Ice Ice Baby by by Vanilla Ice, that sort of bass line. I think it's a bass line. It might be a low guitar. I can't hear it in my head right now. Um, I think it's a bass line, right? Something super recognizable. Everybody knows when either of those songs are coming on. Right. Seven Nation Army, which fun fact is not a bass. It's actually a guitar that's made to sound like a bass through pitch shifting or whatever, which I had no idea because I don't really listen to the White Stripes. Um, But that Seven Nation Army line that goes through basically the entire song. That's an example of a hook. Yeah, by Usher. Um, That that certainly is very hook driven. In fact, that hook literally never stops throughout the entire song. Um, Iron Man by Black Sabbath is an example of a guitar hook, for sure. Smoke on the Water, maybe the most famous guitar hook of all time. Uh, A lot of people learn to play guitar basically because of that song. Smells Like Teen Spirit by by Nirvana. Funky Town by Lip Sync. Superstition by Stevie Wonder is a fantastic example of a hook um, that, that might be the greatest or at least the most catchy hook of all time. That thing is so... So, so catchy. It's just, yeah, so good. So that's sort of an idea of what a hook is. If you didn't know before, there are some ideas, um, some song examples that employ hooks. Um, If you don't know them, just by me listing them, if you go listen to them, I'm sure you'll figure out very quickly what that hook is. And most of them, it comes in right at the beginning. So first, do... And it's corresponding don't is do keep it short 
Don't let it be too long. So you might have heard of the relatively famous psychological study that was done by Harvard, I believe on behalf of the Bell Company, because Bell was telephones back in the day, when they're trying to figure out how to reconfigure phone numbers. Because I think at first they were like four digits or something really small. And then, you know, with more and more people and phones becoming more and more pervasive, right? Everywhere, right? At first, at first, like everything else, right? At first, it's something that only those with a lot of money can afford. And then at some point, eventually, it becomes something we all take for granted, right? Like 50 years ago, none of our grandparents had computers. Now we have com- like 10 computers, right? We have, we have our phone that's a computer, and we have our computer that's a computer, and we have our iPad that's a computer. So anyway, so they did a study to figure out how many things, or specifically digits, could a human remember without sort of separating them or chunking them, putting them in different uh, pieces, if you will. And they came up with basically the average human can do about seven plus or minus two. Again, without chunking and separating out like, so for example, for phone numbers, right? You have the like nine, seven, eight, blah, 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 right? You have that little pattern, right? Three, three, four. I'm not going to give my phone number on this podcast. (coughs) Hint though. The first three numbers were real. Um, Good luck with the rest. But um, anyway, so similarly, right, we want our hook to be something that is easily remembered. I would say, you know, on average, you're not going to memorize the lyrics of a song without listening to it many times, right? If there's a really simple chorus that is a hook, right? If it has a vocal hook, that's like three words repeated over and over. You might memorize it after the first time, but generally speaking, the entirety of the lyric, right? Where the song goes at different times, right? Remembering exactly what the bridge sounds like. Some of those things are going to take multiple listens through. You're probably not going to listen to a song once and be able to sing it back the second time. You probably won't even be able to sing the chorus back the second time in a lot of songs. But with the hook, after your first listen through, you should be able to hum that thing. That's, that's a good sign that your hook is about right. So, so it needs to be something short. It can't be something that's like five phrases long, right? Because even if, if you think of just a chorus or a typical chorus, right? If you have sort of a A, B, A, B, C or something like that, where like, you know, you have an A phrase, a B phrase. So the B phrase changes it up and then A again and then B again. And then you have C, that third phrase, right? You might not remember that after the first time. Your hook, though, you want to be something that people can memorize very quickly after hearing your song. Maybe even before the song is over, they already have it memorized. Maybe the first time they hear it, they already have it memorized. This doesn't mean that they're going to remember it three years later from hearing your song once. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is by time the riff, like, for example, with Stevie Wonder's Superstition, by time the riff plays once, you're probably bobbing your head to it. And, and maybe sing it along to it because it's just infectious and it's simple and it's short, right? The whole riff that repeats over and over takes three seconds, maybe. So it also should be a tight loop. You really want it to be something that's like one or two measures generally, right? Four seconds, five seconds, two seconds, Definitely less than 10 seconds, I would say. Number two, do keep it simple. Don't make it complex. So what do we mean by simple and complex here? We already talked about short and long. So short and long is more about, you know, how long it plays, how many notes it is, maybe. But when it comes to simple and complex, we want it to be something where for the most part, you probably have stepwise motion. Your riff probably, most riffs, or hooks specifically, you want to have like, you know, a couple notes next to each other and then maybe one jump and then it jumps back or something like that. Maybe a couple jumps. But generally speaking, you want it to be not so complex that somebody couldn't hum to it, right? So if you think about it, if you think about a guitar solo, right? Depending on the style of guitar solo, Some are very melodic, right? 
it's it's a type of solo that you could picture being a vocal melody. Sometimes even a, um, a solo will actually do a vocal melody before the vocal melody comes in to sort of hint at ahead of times. Like, for example, Don't Stop Believin'. Before they actually get to the Don't Stop Believin' section, right before that, the guitar plays that melody, that vocal melody. But a lot of times, right, especially with shredding and stuff like that, what is played on a guitar as a solo is not going to be something specifically singable. A lot of it's going to be impossible for somebody to sing. Maybe I shouldn't say impossible, but close. Something that you wouldn't expect them to be able to sing. With your hook, though, you want it to be something generally that is singable because it should be something that's not complex. It shouldn't be jumping all over the place, doing crazy things. It shouldn't have a whole bunch of notes try to packed in there. No. It should be something simple, something that somebody can can be hooked with, that will grab their attention. So whether it's a vocal hook or not, make sure it's singable. Don't be jumping all over the place. Use a lot of stepwise motion. Keep it simple. Don't get complex. Number three, do grab attention. Don't hide in the background. Think about the word hook, right? I don't really know for sure where the official term came from. I believe, though, it comes from the idea of you you hook a fish, right? Like, like when fishing, your hook is what actually gets the fish from the water into your boat so that you can have delightful fish dinner, which if you are not into fish, that's okay. More for me. But, <coughs> excuse me. So, a hook isn't doing its job and you could say, okay, bait specifically, bait on a hook is not doing its job. If it doesn't get the fish to be going about its way, you're like, oh, there's, there's a smaller fish for me to eat. I don't know why fish sound like that. That's what I came up with. Live with it. It's fine. We'll be fine. And then you got to get him to say, ooh, what's that over there? And then it needs to turn around. Stop looking at that smaller fish. Stop looking at that whatever else this fish eats. And it looks at your worm and says, now that looks good. And look, there's even a shiny thing there. I love shiny things. That shiny thing is the hook, right? So it goes after that. And soon it's wondering what it did because it is on your dinner plate. So in order to be doing its job, the bait and hook combination for fishing needs to get the fish uh, fish's attention right a fish doesn't just run into your hook and accidentally get hooked like it's not like the fish is like oh i'm blind and i just ran into a hook and oh no it's in my mouth how did this happen right like that's, that's not how it goes it gets its attention has been gotten and it went after the thing and then you hooked it and then if you did a good job, you got it in your boat and it's dinner. If you didn't do a good job, then it's lost and maybe has a hook in it for the rest of its life. And now it's going to lead a miserable life. What have you done? So now that everybody wants to go fishing, um, so it needs to grab attention. Don't have it in the background. It needs to be forward, whether that be in the mix, right? In the mix, it should be forward. It should be like if it's competing with your vocal melody, if it's not a vocal part, that should be that B right? A is your vocal melody, basically always. This is right, B, right? This is that second thing that should be noticed. Number four, do, this might be the most surprising one, do bring it in and out. Don't let it play constantly. Generally, generally. So some on the list that I mentioned before, which are all pretty f famous songs, some of them are famous specifically for their hook. Some of those actually don't do that. Some of those actually have the hook the entire time. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it has the hook literally the entire song. From beginning to end, intro to outro, that hook is going. Seven Nation Army, I believe, stops it for a brief amount of time. But a lot of the other ones, they, they have it for a while, and then they bring it out just to... Bring it back in. So for superstition, for example, I think it's in the chorus where it actually drops out. But then when the chorus is done, it's right back to it, right? So that gives you just enough of a breather to want it back, right? So a way to think about this 
is having a guest in your house, right? The, the optimal guest experience, if you will, is when somebody comes over and they stay just long enough that you're like ready for them to go. You don't feel ripped off. Like, I'm ready for them to leave now. But you don't want them to stay long enough that you're looking at your significant other like, hmm, how do we like hint at them? Like, hey, it's time to leave without being rude because I don't want to be rude and I don't want to make them feel unwelcome, but also they've been here for like 10 hours and we like them only as like, six hour people, (laughs) right? Because depending on your relationship with people, the amount that they can stay before you get sick of them is different, right? There's some people where after two hours, I'm like, that was great. I enjoyed the first hour, (laughs) right? There are people who after 10 hours, you're like, you know what? I'm really not sick of you. This is great. Um, But anyway, an important element, right? Is knowing your time. And that doesn't mean, like even if you get sick of them after five hours, Let's, let's say the window is at about four hours. You're no longer like, oh man, they're leaving. I really wish they'd stay longer, right? You're, you're kind of at the point of like, oh, I could hang out for longer, but you know, eh, it was a good time. We had a good time. We're good. But by five and a half hours, you're like, oh my gosh, please get out of my house. Like, whoa, what are you doing? Like, what? why are you still here? It's like two o'clock in the morning. I have to get up tomorrow morning. What, what's happening here? So similarly, you want your hook to be right in that zone, right? Between that four hours and five and a half hours, metaphorically, don't have your hook for that long. Hopefully you don't even have albums that long, much less songs, but that's what you want to employ, right? You can get sick of a good thing, right? It's like the climax of a movie. You might think, man, I just wish the final climactic fight happened the whole movie because it's so cool and all the action. Well, Transformers movies gave you basically that, and who likes Transformers movies? Not many people. A lot of people still paid money to see them for whatever reason, but, like, they're not exactly all-time classics. Meanwhile, movies like, say, The Dark Knight barely has, like, there's, like, two fist fights. I mean, a little bit more than that, but, like, the climactic fight is its really for the soul of Gotham. It's not even about the fist fight, right? The Joker even jokes, do you think I'd bet every, my whole plan on a fist fight with you? Um, not an exact quote, but you know what I'm saying. So, so you can't have too much of a good thing, right? And look, in my opinion, as a person who generally hates sort of the, the rap, um, rap pop type area of things, like really most popular, most pop music, like what's on pop radio, right? I'm not exactly, uh, not exactly a Taylor Swift fan, as if you've listened to podcasts for any amount of time, you have figured out. Um, so needless to say, the song Yeah is not exactly my general cup of tea, but I really enjoy listening to that song, despite it being extraordinarily questionable in the lyrics department, which is something I normally care about a lot, and being just, you know, I mean, you know, whatever. But man, is that hook catchy. And you know what? I don't get sick of that hook, even though it happens the entire song, because it's that good. I think Stevie Wonder's Superstition, it could play the entire time and about 30 minutes longer, and I wouldn't get sick of it. But I do think it gets even better because he takes those brief, short breaks from them. Right? So don't be afraid to take it out and bring it back in. A lot of times, you know, these some of these are like all-time great hooks, right? Like Superstition is an all-time great hook. I wouldn't necessarily expect that whatever your hook is, it might not be good enough. And this isn't a hit on you, right? Like, it's just superstition, right? Okay, this is like in the GOAT discussion. It just might not be something that's good enough or catchy enough or amazing enough to have for two minutes straight. It just might not. And if it is, great. Do it. If it's something where, like, yeah, it's a hook, but there's enough interesting other stuff in your song that it doesn't matter and it's not always at the forefront, fine. But generally speaking, bring it in and out, make people want it back, right? So back to the guest example, right? There's a beauty in leaving right right at the time when people are like, wouldn't be upset by you leaving or, or, or frustrated that you left too soon and they, you know, made this fancy dinner and then you stayed for half an hour, right? 
so that they're excited to see you again, right? It's kind of like sometimes I have bro nights with my friends and my wife goes back to her family's because they live 15 minutes down the road. So it's great. She gets time with her sisters. I get time with my friends. We stay up way too late. We go buy way too many donuts the next morning because we have Amy's donuts near us, which is phenomenal. Um, and it's great. And what's really great about that is I always realize how much I love my wife, but there's something about, cause I don't, I don't see her for, you know, at least 12 hours, usually more like 24 hours. I don't see her all of Friday night, right? Cause we always hold them on Friday nights and it's just long enough of a break. If you want to call it that, right? Like not, not a, you know, it's not like, Oh, I need a break from my wife. I need her to like go to her family's house. Like I, I don't need that. But that time away makes it so we're so happy to see each other and it regenerates our appreciation of each other even more, right? This is just a natural human thing. So let people miss your hook for a second. Let them miss it and want it to come back so that they look at their friends in the car and go, oh yeah, when it comes back, okay? That's what you want to go for. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Really quick, the four things again, do keep it short. Don't let it be too long. Do keep it simple. Don't make it complex. Don't have tons of notes and crazy leaps all over the place. Make it singable generally. Do grab attention. Don't hide it in the background. And do bring it in and out. Don't let it play constantly. Most of the time. Most of the time. There are always exceptions. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was and you're on YouTube, be sure to drop a like. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you are interested in my nine other ways to start writing a song, be sure to download the free guide at songwritertheory.com slash free guide for my 10 different ways to start writing a song. Five are from a lyrical standpoint and five are from a musical standpoint. As always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate those of you who shoot me emails. <coughs> I think there's one of you I need to respond to your email, but everybody else I have... Um, finished responding to emails from weeks prior, but, uh, I do, at least at this time, I still have, uh, the time and the amount of emails I get. I do respond to all emails. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all of you. Love getting emails from you. Love the positive comments I get. Uh, even some of the negative comments are uh, still helpful, even if they hurt my feelings for a little bit, but it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I can deal with it. It's fine. So anyway, have an awesome week, and I will talk to you next time. <laughs>